Yes, sir. Based on the description provided by the observer a lot and my own examination of the murder scene, the cause of Dr. Poole's death was asphyxiation and trauma resulting from compression of the windpipe. The damage to the vertebrae of the neck would indicate the great force was used. His broken right wrist and forearm and the scuff marks on his boots indicate that he attempted to resist his attacker. There was little blood apparent, yet the injuries must have caused a great deal of bleeding, so the blood must have washed away in the recent heavy rain. We can conclude that Dr. Poole was murdered by someone with great physical strength. Most healthy adult humans would be strong enough to strike the blow that killed Dr. Poole. The livid discoloration of the flesh where the blood pooled after death indicates that the body was not moved after the murder. He died where the robots found him. Dr. Poole was not strangled. His windpipe was crushed by a blow to the throat. From the uniform markings, I would assume a blunt instrument was used. Judging from the injuries, the murder weapon was a hard, blunt, elongated object. It could have been a robot's hand, or a metal bar, or the handle of a tool. Whatever the weapon was, it was almost certainly stained with blood during the murder. That is a comm network routing junction. Poole may have tried to call for help when he was attacked, or he or someone else may have been trying to access the computer network. Murderer, of course, as well as the murder weapon. Also, the smart pages that made up Dr. Poole's journal have obviously been separated and scattered. I will be here if you need me, sir. Hello, Mr. Derek. Hello, Mr. Just Derek. Please make a decision. It is hard to talk to you if you do not know your own name. You want me to call you Mr. Sir? Do not call me Derek. That is your old name. This conversation is too silly for a robot. Goodbye. select your destination. Exit door is sealed. Plotting trajectory. your selected destination. Preparing to open exit door. Please select your destination. Welcome to Sector 1, Compass Tower.
Center. Approaching a restricted area. Please do not attempt to proceed. This is the elevator to the upper level of the Compass Tower. It is a highly restricted zone. Special orders prevent anyone from entering the upper tower. The orders state that access to the upper tower is restricted for all of Robot City. right about that, friend Derek. This rule may not apply to you. However, I still cannot let you pass. Because the upper tower is unknown to me, it could be a dangerous place. The first law requires that I ensure your safety. I must remind you that, like all robots, I am forbidden from going into the upper tower. The presence of your companion robot does not change the situation. All robots in Robot City are forbidden to enter the upper section of the tower. No, there is no need for such orders because no Robot City robot would attempt to enter a forbidden area. I see. Alpha is not part of the Robot City chain of command. Under the second law, Alpha will follow your orders. If you order him to accompany you, he will go. And since he can protect you from harm, there is no need to restrain you, either. Very well, friend Derek. You may enter the Upper Compass Tower. Derek, I must advise you not to proceed. The area beyond where I am standing is off limits to robots. I am here to protect you. I don't know. The area is off limits to me. I have never been in there, but I do know that Dr. Poole went in there and now he is dead. There may very well be a connection. don't know. The area is off limits to me. I've never been in there. You intend to proceed then? If you are determined to go in, I will not impede you. Perhaps you'll inform me of what you find. I am concerned that Robot City may still be in danger. I meant... I meant that a killer may still be on the loose. If you are innocent, then please be careful, friend Derek. 